And welcome back to a special Bermuda edition of the TV show. I'm Jay Black, joined as always by Rhea Hughes and Angelo Cataldi. And boy, was Angelo going off before the show started. I can't wait to get to the segment where he gets to continue this conversation. <laughs> uh, but before we get to that, uh, Angelo, before you got here, Rhea, Angelo said, Rhea Hughes is the hero of this episode. And uh, Angelo, <laughs> why don't you tell her why? Well, here's the thing. Uh, Rhea is a very good judge of television. Very, very good judge. I've watched more British TV in the past year because of Rhea. She texts me 30 minutes into a movie called The Burial on Prime, which hasn't had a good original movie in forever. And she goes, I can already tell you this is a really good movie. Check it out. So it wasn't even an hour, Rhea. I, I uh, fired it up. Gail was watching with us. You couldn't be more right. It is a terrific movie that is streaming right now on Amazon Prime. Rhea, explain them what this movie is. So excited. So, you know, I'm, I'm flipping around on Saturday and I said, I didn't even know this movie existed. It's called The Burial, Jamie F. Fox and Tommy Lee Jones. I go, well, I love both of those actors, but I go... It's about a lawsuit about a funeral home. And I'm going, well, how entertaining can this be? Massively entertaining. So basically the story is um, Tommy Lee Jones plays Jeremiah O'Keefe, who's a small funeral parlor owner, I believe in Mississippi, he owns like eight homes. He's getting older. He wants to leave it to his kids, but he's run into some money trouble. So he hooks up with a Canadian billionaire who's going to buy three of his places and not get into death insurance, what I didn't know anything about death insurance, but that's part of it. And what happens is the billionaire begins to string him along for a really long time, basically waiting for him to go bankrupt so he can swoop in and steal all of his cases. So um, somehow Jeremiah O'Keefe gets hooked up with a personal injury lawyer called Jamie Foxx, who is absolutely in his element. Mm -hmm. You first see him oh. in the court on a personal injury thing and you don't know how he's going to sell it, but he goes, this is my, uh, my client Clovis. Now my client Clovis was drunk. I mean, he was drunk. He was <laughs> hammered. He was as, as Jamie uh, Fox says, go to the flow. I'm not going to give away the line, but the way he gets his client out of, you know, uh, wins his case for him is so amazing. He hooks up with Jeremiah. They take on the billionaire, but the, Jamie Foxx, the way he plays this guy, it's like this role was written for him. He plays uh, Willie Gary, who's a, now, he's actually 75 and still practicing law. It is based on a true story. And uh, and he remained friends with Jeremiah O'Keefe until he passed away in 2016 and wound up going from a personal injury guy to a guy who took on Anheuser-Busch. So it's just, it's a really great story, but it's greatly acted. That's what I love about it. Well, wow. uh, Jamie Foxx, let me just say, Jamie Foxx owns this role. Yep. It is, in fact, what they do to show you how great a speaker is, the first scene he's in church addressing yes. uh, a, the, uh, all the, congr uh, the congregation. And you could see how similar he is to like an evangelist. And then he gets in a courtroom and he's just, he won an Oscar for Ray. And I'm yep. going to tell you, I loved Ray. He's every bit as good in the burial as he was in Ray. In Ray. And here's a fun little note. So I'm watching Tommy Lee Jones. He's like almost 80 now. He's really He's, yeah, old. Old, right? And and um, I'm watching it and I'm going, man, Harrison Ford must be really angry because <laughs> this is the grumpy old man role yep. he always gets. Yeah. Guess what, Rhea? What Tommy, you passed it up? Tommy Lee Jones was not the first choice for the yeah. role. Guess who was? Harrison Ford? Yep. Yeah. Harrison wow. Ford turned it down. And that's what. So they went to the second grumpy old man. And that was Tommy. These guys only get, these are great actors of our past. Now they just get the grumpy old man role. But, but here's, so here's what I'll, I'll say about Tommy Lee. I thought he brought a lot of humanity to the role. He did. He did. You he, know, was, he, he was good. He was a great foil to Jamie Foxx because I no. just thought, you know, 
this is my family business and you're trying to steal it from me. And I just thought and one he other was role, Rhea, Journey Smollett. Huh. Never seen her in anything. She's now. the opposing counsel and she is so horrendously hateable for most yes. of it. And then she you kind of like her at the end. Yeah. But this is the best movie I've seen in months. Yeah. It is a well-written story performed spectacularly. You cannot go wrong with the burial. Uh, right now, unfortunately, Jay is trapped on a on an ocean liner in Bermuda. You didn't get to see it yet. You are in for a treat. This is a great film. Thank you, Rhea Hughes. Well, I, I'm looking very forward to checking it out. I also would like to say to whoever runs uh, Prime's UI download system, get better because I set it overnight to download so I could watch it on the boat. And it, I looked at it. It was like, would you like to download this? I was like, yes, last night when I told you to download it. So very frustrating. I can't wait to see it. Uh, let's move on to another frustrating story before we get to this Pete Davidson story. Uh, you know, we talked on the radio a lot about the slap, Angelo, the, oh, the, yes. slap, the Chris Rock slap of, or excuse me, the Will Smith slap of Chris Rock at the Oscars. Uh, you know, giving us all the meme, get my wife's name out your bleeping mouth. Well, it turns out that it wasn't his wife's name in his mouth. It was just Jada Pickett Smith's name, not Will Smith's wife. Apparently, they've been separated for, was it six years? for, for in his, Six or seven years. 2016. By my yeah. count, that's eight years. Eight years they've been apart. And, you know, normally we don't get into tabloid that's stuff. Seven. Yeah, she yeah. she's just been... <laughs> like on every show talking about this new autobiography and I got frustrated with it only because there was such a big TV moment and there was so much beneath the iceberg of that moment that we're just finding out about now. Did this story frustrate you? Like it frustrated me. Like I, yeah, I thought yeah, very a couple of things. I have to start this with a disclaimer, right? Jada is doing all this to sell her memoir. Sure. Yeah, we are currently competing in the market <laughs> with memoirs because my yeah. memoir, Loud, I actually have a, a full copy of it now. It did oh, arrive here. It's awesome. Hey, I'm gonna, it's going to be out in a few weeks. So we are So if I'm ripping her, understand <laughs> it may just be to get a competitive advantage. <laughs> so if something tells me she's going to out outsell me. But yeah. here's the thing: I said when Will Sw uh, Smith slapped Chris Rock, dead to me. I'll never watch anything he ever did before, and I'll never watch anything he does again. It was a horrific act, and it was disgraceful. Now that I've heard her go on her weepy little book tour, yeah. he's dead to me, too. They're yeah. both dead to me because I think she's a fraud, all right? I think she's just using this to sell books, which uh, I plan similar kind of things <laughs> in a few weeks. I can reveal on this podcast, Angelo also not married to Will Smith. So this you heard it here. Yes. No, I no, come no. on, Rhea. The guy wasn't even with her anymore. So here's what I will say is, you know, from reading, you know, from seeing all the interviews with her, they have been acting, you know, the seven years that they were separated because they've been out. They they go to they would go to movie premieres, they presented this family, you know, we're so tight and all this kind of stuff. So in his mind, like, if he didn't defend Jada, they'd be like, well, why didn't you defend your wife? Not yeah. knowing it. I think he was just still playing a role that they kind of felt like they had been playing for seven years. Doesn't mm. excuse him. I'm just saying he was saying my wife because everybody thought they were still married. Yeah, it was all a big, big publicity stunt the whole yeah. thing and frankly both of them are not worth anybody's time i mean yeah. it they're not i yeah. know people will still support them because will has enormous talent but i'm sorry you yes, can't be this toxic and and still appeal to me as a viewer you're both dead to me that you know what that's the best word for it is toxic because the whole thing yeah. feels kind of gross in my stomach when i when i look at it and think about it Switching uh, gears a little bit to what Angelo was ranting about. Rhea came on mid rant and was like, well, hello, what's happening <laughs> yes. on, uh, with this? I, uh, somebody that I have criticized before. I thought he came off very well. And Angelo disagrees with me. Saturday Night Live the, the, is back because the writer's strike is over. And Pete Davidson was on. 
And because of the uh, Hamas and Israeli issue, he came up and said, uh, hey, instead of a cold open, let me tell you a little story about, you know, what I went through when my dad died in 9-11. And he, you know, kind of split the difference down the middle, talking about how kids should not be victims of of these these types of things and pretty much universally uh, received well online. Everybody said, wow, this is a pretty amazing thing. Wasn't expecting this from Pete Davidson. I certainly wasn't. And it kind of changed my perspective on him. I knew that he had dealt with a lot, uh, you know, with his drug problem and with his dad. And I, I found it to be a uh, a moving statement from someone that I wasn't used to hearing moving statements about. So my question to you guys was, did it change your opinion on him? And Angelo, I just want to, like an NBA, yeah, just stand I'll tell you what it, it, it just once again, underlined to me how uh, he is a fraud, a total fraud, because now uh, he's the bad boy. Remember? Oh, he's a bad boy. He's got a new girlfriend every three weeks. Uh, that that Bupkis show he did. Well, I will never recover from the first scene no. in Bupkis. I will never recover, uh, n- n- let alone all the other garbage he has shoveled our way in the p- past few years since he got famous on SNL. Now he's a spokesman for victims of terrorism. Listen, I understand they had to address somehow the horrors that are going on right now in Israel and the Gaza Strip and uh, in, in Palestine and all that. I understand it. He's not the guy who should be out front for any of that because you can't have it both ways. Let me just say, you can't be Pete Davidson, Mr. Edgy... Uh, questionable taste and all, and then be a spokesman for our terrorism victims. I'm sorry. I bought none of it. I can't stand the guy. I hate him more now than I did before. Uh, they should have found another way, way to address what's go- going on in uh, Israel and Palestine rather than the way they did with Pete Davidson. Reed, did you see the video? Do I get a chance to respond to him yes. now? Yes, I want to hear. Because you're a thousand percent wrong, Angelo. You could not be more wrong in this issue. They have a guy who's there who, you know, no matter what you think of him, he is a victim of terrorism. You know, I mean, his father was killed in 9-11. I believe he was a fireman. And so, you know, I literally, and you know I'm not a Pete Davidson fan. I I bought that. I bought him 100 percent that he's viewing it you never recover from a tragedy that happens to you as a child. I lost my father, my first father, when I was four years old. I've never gotten over that. I mean, it's it's something that sits with you. And I think for Pete, it was good because that audience needs to understand that terrorism affects like everybody, even people we might not like. And it and it affects them in terrible ways. And I, I thought it was brilliantly handled by Pete Davidson. Can you reconcile that Pete Davidson with the one who was involved in the first scene from Bupkis? Yeah, because he was being an actor. An actor? Again. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. That, that, that To me, it's it, it's too too different. You can't be both. A bad boy on, on all of the shows that he does can't suddenly be a role model. It's just the way I react. I don't to think it. he was trying but to I be a role model. That. He was just saying, I've right. been a victim of terrorism. I know right. what it's like. And I think that that was, that was a message that only he could deliver from Saturday Night Live. All right. Just understand that I like him so little that I won't even go to Taco Bell anymore. Oh, <laughs> stop it. Taco Bell's awesome. Wait, is he, no, is I he... know it is, but he's a spokesman for them. No more tacos for me. <laughs> Angela, you, you might not have anything left to watch or eat if you keep uh, canceling uh, things that people you don't like. Oh, no. Have. It's where you're wrong. I, I there's a new Lifetime movie coming out soon. I can't wait for that. I'll be watching. <laughs> uh, well, we'll be talking about that in just a moment. But let's talk about um, our America's favorite segment, the British segment with Rhea Hughes. What do we got this week, Rhea? So, I, you know, I have a split thing. I was uh, my my intention was Clark and I watched an episode that we both found hilarious, and it's an Irish. You know, I always put the British, Irish, Scottish kind of under one umbrella. So we watched the first episode of Finding Joy. It stars Amy Huberman. Uh, she's like a 30-something woman whose boyfriend has just left her a move out. And the opening scene is her dog talking. And we were, do- you get a dog talking in anything, I'm pretty much going <laughs> to like it. So, you know, I won't lie. 
We laughed for 10 minutes. He checked out towards the end of the first episode. I made it. To, I said, I kept saying they had a good edge. She's an awkward, complete Angelo. She's like you. Everything must be in its place. Nice. You know, she needs order. <laughs> it was like they ran out of ideas after the first episode. So, I mean, like I said, Clark, I was going to, you know, combine British and teen. I made it to the fifth episode and I finally said, I'm done. But I pivoted. I do have a recommendation. And of course, we always go back to the murder mysteries. This is an Australian show. It's called Black Snow. Uh, and all both of these shows are on Prime. Finding Jewel, you can access through Acorn. So Black Snow, it's uh, about the 1994 murder of a teenage girl. And what happens is no one's ever found. And it's in North Queensland, Australia. No one's ever, you know, gone to prison for it. They open up a time capsule in 2019. And there's a letter from the dead girl, which she basically said someone's trying to kill her. They bring in a cold case detective. But it's also about, and I didn't know any of this, that Australia, we always thought Australia, kind of everybody sent their convicts there. They also have a terrible history of, uh, they're called South Islanders, of basically bringing all of these people from islands around there and kind of lying to them and kidnapping them and forcing them to work in the cane fields. Mm. It was their version of slavery, basically. So they have a very bad history of that. So you, it's it's kind of weaved in there, the South Islanders and their issues with Australia and this murder mystery. It's uh, six episodes. I'm five in. I really like it. I think it's, it's, it's kind of standard issue, but I like how they're weaving in history about Australia that I didn't know. I think it's very good. And what a great a book. Fan. In television, I think it's excellent. What's that, Ange? I'm a big fan of Australian TV. Wentworth, we know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but what a great hook! Uh, finding a letter yeah. in a time capsule that I've never seen that before. it was really brilliant. It was really like she foreshadowed her own death and nobody knew about it for 20 something years. And Good. just to, gotta check to, it out, gotta do it. Connect on that dog issue. I do a voice for my dog. And I, I just do her voice and I improv like what she's thinking at any given time. My kids yeah. enjoy the dog's voice talking to the dog more than she they like talking to me. I've talked more as Rosie than I have as myself uh -huh. in my house for the last three years. They just, Rosie, what do you think <laughs> about that? So I got to talk as Rosie. So is do you have a teen corner this week or was that our teen corner? No, because that was our plan to watch that. And, you know, I don't know if you, I'm a little busy uh, with the Phillies continuing on so yeah, yeah. we kind of no, that was fun. our plan to watch it uh we watched it on saturday evening and then he hated it and i was like all right i'm out of i'm out of stuff so watch the first episode very funny after that you're on your own it got great ratings i will say this maybe we're wrong right. but i thought it fizzled out after the first episode gotcha uh all right angela what do you got for us this week yeah, to me, you need to apologize to no one. No. The burial is the best thing I've seen in months. <laughs> Your work was done the minute you let me know about that one. <laughs> All right. I got a great new show. Once again, this Apple TV is just producing good stuff now. It's yeah. called Lessons in Chemistry. It is phenomenal. Now, a couple of things you need to know. I love shows that are set in the 50s because i was a kid in the 50s and uh, it's just i like that era and i love the way they created the 50s and these labs that they're in it's phenomenal uh and the thing is gail my wife gail had read the book right and she said they're following it very closely she said the book was great i hope it's as good it's really good brie larson is both a oh, yeah. producer and the main star in it. And she's this prim 1950s chemistry nerd. And it, her whole life is just working in the lab. And, and uh, all, then she ends up getting paired up with a guy uh, played by Lewis Pullman, who I had not seen before or didn't recognize. And the only thing I didn't love about this show was that He's not good looking enough <laughs> to woo Brie Larson. Yeah, Brie you Larson. Hate that all in shows. Brie, Brie Larson right. is all timer. She is beautiful. Brie and Brie Larson has never looked better than she does in this show. Yeah. I love her as a 50s uh 
uh, you're like a perfectionist type. And uh, the basic story is that they're going against the tide and he's very unorthodox and she's extremely orthodox. It's kind of its own version of a rom-com, but you won't even notice that for several episodes. But I think you're going to love it. I think it's got a great story and great performances. And uh, they're only giving you two episodes to start and one a week. That's so it's one of these good it's not a it's not a binge, but I, I I can give a very strong recommendation to Lessons in Chemistry on Apple. Check it out. Definitely. And uh, right. before I do my review, I want to say, Angelo, I checked out uh, Beckham at your. Uh, oh. uh, it was oh. great. It was absolutely Good, isn't it? fantastic. So, so well done. The Netflix documentary team is oh. I mean. It's between them and Max, we are in a golden age of documentaries, man. It is just phenomenal. So, uh, we no. had talked a little bit a couple of weeks ago about the reboot of Frasier and how it was getting crushed. So, I wanted to check it out. Downloaded the first two episodes, I watched them on the boat. And uh, here's my review it's it's pretty good. Here's the thing about uh -huh. Frasier it, it, it is, it is, and I think the problem that the reviewers have had with it is that it is completely unnecessary which I agree with. There was no reason to bring this show back. They didn't, the, the hook that they came up with was that the son turned out like the grandfather, that how uh, Frazier's wow. dad was a down to earth, blue collar guy. The son turned out to be a down to earth, blue collar guy. And now Frazier's living with him. So they have a completely new cast. Uh, it's set in Boston, which opens the door to some cheers reunion stuff. Uh, one could hope for. Uh, here's the thing. It's pretty well written. And a well-written sitcom in front of a live studio audience that applauds and, and laughs at the right times, I have not seen in quite some time. So maybe the retro feel of it got me going, but I give it a solid B. You can't, uh, you're not going to go wrong if you want to kill 25 minutes with an old friend and watch Frasier. It wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, All right, now. so let me let me paraphrase what you just said. Yeah. Uh, they rebooted a show that was completely unnecessary. Yes. And you recommend it? I recommend <laughs> killing time with it. What what well, is that's... necessary really when you get to the end of your life? Nothing. Uh... <laughs> You're <laughs> younger than both of us. You're not at the end of your life. Oh, yeah. would you wait a minute? I'm the expert on this. <laughs> I don't have enough time to watch crap like Frasier. Hey, I'm on a cruise ship with the living dead. So I don't know. Maybe it's, it's infected my brain. Uh, last thing before we get out of here, Rhea, I know you got to go. Um, I just wanted to put a little plug in tomorrow night. Uh, you'll probably hear it uh, tonight if you download the show Thursday morning. My my new Lifetime movie, Handyman from oh. Hell, debuts on uh, the Lifetime Movie Network. Uh, it was originally called Overhaul. We wanted to make a classy uh, version. And we sent it to Lifetime and they were like, oh, Overhaul, that's a great title. We're switching it to Handyman from Hell. And we went, all right. And oh it kind God. of grew on us. Uh, it, it's all right, let me see. Um, Phillies Game 3. Um, uh, no. What's the get? Handyman, Handyman, from, Handyman from Hell. From hell. You, 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 You're getting me on Friday, Jay. You're getting yeah. me on Friday. Yeah. Just TiVo. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yeah. Hold on a minute. Jay, did they only run your Lifetime films the one time? Or did no, they no, keep showing? This will run several dozen times over the course oh, of the okay. Okay, good. Because I'm not watching the premiere of the Phillies around. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. You can, you can, it's, it'll be on a video on demand streaming uh, starting on uh, the 20th. Uh, I'll tell you this it's got some big stars in it. We got Michael Ian Black uh, is in it, uh, oh, Frank Caliendo, who you might remember from uh, Fox. Yes, uh, we had Frank on our show. Yeah, yeah Frank Frank's is good great. Guy. Uh, we got Vic DiBetetto, who's a, a big internet star, also one of my good friends. We got Steve Hofstetter, put the whole thing together, another big internet star. And uh, the guy who directed it is this kid, uh, Cody Hartman, out of Pittsburgh. And he just directed a big budget uh, uh, movie about the Titanic, which will be uh, debuting next year. I think it's got its premiere in November. So we caught him right at the right time. It's a lifetime movie. But trust me, it's a it's a little bit more than the average Lifetime movie that you used to see. And we got a lot of really uh, great people. I, I have a All question. Right, Andrew, are we going to watch this and review it next week, you and I? Yes, we're going to watch the first yeah. few minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to do the big daddy thing. 
No, wait, Angela, you got to do Big Daddy told me whenever he had to uh, read or watch something, you have to watch the first few minutes and then fast forward about 80 minutes in so that you can give two bits of criticism, but one from the yes. middle so the person thinks you watch the whole thing. That was the whole Big Daddy uh, rule about uh, reviewing. So uh, the one thing that bothers me when you do these uh, Lifetime movies, Jack, yeah. I like when you're in them, yes. right? Do you think so little of your own acting that when you're writing these things, you don't even write a part for yourself? It's not. You know what it was when I wrote this? I, it was just a, a matter of like, let's just get it done and we'll figure it out. And we got so many good actors that came in. I was like, I don't nah. need to do it. If I, if I, I promise you, you'll always know the role I write for myself because it's got uh, the first name is a, is a one syllable and the last name is a color. Just like I'm Jay Black. Yeah. I, was, I was Hank Green in one movie. I was Mac Brown in yes. another. I had one that was Tom Pinkerton. I, I, I will write myself... Oh. For you, Angela, the next one, I will definitely have a, a name and a color in there so I can be in it. Mm, I, you know, I just, I love your work. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I appreciate it. And uh, I hope you guys will check it Up out. To that. Uh, we, we strongly recommend The Burial on Amazon Prime. Strongly recommend it. It's the best thing in a while. You'll love it. I promise you that. Uh, if you need to see Pete Davidson's uh, phony opening remarks or any of the rest of SNL, you could always do that on NBC and Peacock. Uh, Rhea Hughes highly recommends Black Snow on Amazon Prime. It's Australian. And while you're looking at Australian stuff, you could check out Wentworth on Netflix. <laughs> it's the best thing I've seen in a decade. Uh, Apple TV has a new uh, series. Starring Brie Larson, that's Lessons in Chemistry. I recommend it. And uh, Frasier is on both NBC, and you could see it on Peacock. And The Handyman from Hell, right here, Thursday night at 8, on written the, by the great Dre Black. And it's on the Lifetime Movie Network. And I forgot to mention the biggest star, Jody Sweeten from Full House and Fuller House is is our in our movie we got so many big stars for this one so i'm super excited uh special thanks uh, to, thanks to you guys for joining us special thanks to jared clapper i don't know if you guys have been watching he's been killing it for us on social media yeah really love awesome. it love Mark. it he's doing a great job uh so jared thank you for all of that uh please follow us online there's a link in the description where you can follow all of jared's work on social media tell your friends about us so that we can keep growing and uh guys we'll be back next week i think i'm in aruba next week so We'll see you of then. Of course you are. <laughs>